，有很多家人都希望我直播。如果这条视频超过一万转发，评论区打出“直播”，我将在十二月二十六日开启直播，带大家骚两圈。No, you're not dreaming. That's Elon Musk speaking Mandarin. And no, I didn't mess up the pronunciation. That is Elon Musk, and that. Is Elon Musk two different person? Yeah, apparently there's a doppelganger for everyone here in China. Anyway, I digress. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're gonna talk about the Chinese sleeping culture. Huh? Everyone knows how hard Chinese people work. Everyone here is just so busy hustling to become the next Jack Ma or Elon Musk. And sure, everyone already knows that. So you must be thinking, but what does that have to do with the Chinese sleeping culture? Well, trust me, it's all connected. Have you ever heard of the 996 work culture here in China? No, never. 996. 996. 996. Well, 996 basically means working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. six days a week. But of course, not every job is like that. It really depends on your company and your boss. But personally, I feel it's more of the industry, as in which industry you work for. For example, if you work in the design industry, there is bound to be more crunch time compared to other jobs. So instead of 996, it's more like 997 or even worse. And because there's 1.4 billion people here, it only gets worse. If you don't want the job, they can easily find someone else to fill in for you. But I'm not here to take a shit at China's crazy work-life balance. After all, many Asian countries operate in the same way, like Japan, Korea, or even in Singapore, where I'm from. But don't worry, there is always a silver lining. The snooze life. Here in China, if you snooze, you don't lose. In fact, it's celebrated. Why? Honestly, I really don't know. It's probably because different countries just have different perspectives on what is seen as appropriate office behavior, or in this case, office break. I know in Singapore, people tend to go for cigarette breaks every now and then, you know, just to slowly kill time and themselves. And typically, employers are all right with that because who's going to fuss about someone going down for a puff every now and then? But what is inappropriate office behaviour is you napping at your desk. And I know for a fact that this is frowned upon not just in Singapore, but in most parts of the world. But surprisingly, not here in China. Here, it's completely normal to sleep at your desk. But maybe you think that resting your head on the table for a bit, it should be fine, right? Well, check this out. Unfreaking believable You know what? It's even seen as a sign of you being hardworking at work. Huh? Of course, I don't mean it in a literal way that once you step into the office, you pull out the sheets and the bed and go to sleep. Because that would literally and figuratively be the dream job. But because there's just so much work with so little time to finish it, a lot of people have to clock in extra hours. And yes, I know, be it here or any parts of the world, work is never ending. But personally, I feel that here in China, the workload and the deadlines are just a bit, well, actually maybe not a bit, a lot more demanding. So people have to stay back in the office longer than what they hoped for. And essentially, work becomes home. And if someone decides to sleep at home, you know, everyone probably knows that he's gone through a pretty tough night or even an all-nighter. So they'll just leave him be. And so after a while, everyone becomes close to each other. Your colleagues become your other family. And a family that sticks together, sleeps together. Like sticky rice. Well, for most parts. Because we all know that one kid who is so lazy and expects everyone to cover for him when he doesn't do his work. I've heard that in most universities, not all, but most, have a two-hour lunch break. What? And yeah, two hours sounds a bit excessive for me. But hear me out, it's for a good cause. It's so that students can catch a bit of a nap time just before their next lesson after lunch. And you know, I can't say I disagree with them because the brain is most active right after a nap. Oh. But I mean, sleeping at your desk has become such a big thing here in China that kids are being trained from a young age to start doing it. I mean, just take a look 
that. That is some high-tech chair. It looks even more comfortable than your average business class seat. Or say goodbye to that thousand dollar gaming chair. You don't need them. Just get one of these. Back when I was in kindy, we had to rearrange our desk and chairs to the corners of the room so that we have space to lay out our, what they call then, beds. <sighs> How the tables, I mean chairs, have turned. But not only that, the food that people eat here plays a huge part of it too. People are just too busy to cook, so it's always takeout, takeout, takeout. And most of the takeout foods here contain a lot of Where your MSG? Yep. And not only that, most Chinese foods are very heavy on carbohydrates, so you know, carbs and MSG, when they come together, it's gonna be like sleeping pills. It's gonna knock you out. So what do you guys think about the Chinese sleeping culture? Is it appropriate or is it not? Let me know in the comments down below. But yeah, I guess that's about it for today. Thanks for watching. And remember, it's alright to sleep at your office. Don't forget to subscribe and stay so thirsty.